The Devils got shut out by 2024 All-Star Jeremy Swayman in Boston. And to add insult to injury, the Devils might be dealing with another injury. We have a lot to break down in today's episode of Locked on Devils. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked on Devils with Trey Matthews. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, college hockey flip a play announcer, Devils are for Pucks and Pitchforks, and also part-time credential, me a member, Trey Matthews. Hope you guys enjoyed your long weekend. Yesterday was Martin Luther King Jr. Day. New Jersey Devils had a matinee matchup against the Boston Bruins. And I don't know how many of you live on the West Coast, but if you were out West and you tuned into the Devils game, It was a morning puck drop for you. So I don't know how tired, lethargic, coffee-driven you might have been to watch the game, but I can guarantee you one thing. The Devils came out slow-footed against the Bruins, and it showed. So in today's episode, in the first segment, I will share some of my main takeaways from the game. And then in the second segment, we'll highlight some players that caught my eye. We will talk about Brendan Smith and his Injury circumstance, is it a big loss for the Devils? And then in the third and final segment, to round it all off like I do with every post-game recap, I will compare the stats and give the Devils a letter grade. So before we get into the knit and grit of everything, I got some bad news, good news, but more bad news. So what's the first bit of bad news? Well, the Pittsburgh Penguins snapped the Seattle Kraken's nine-game win streak, which means the Penguins are now ahead of the Devils in the Metropolitan Division. Same with the Islanders, even though the Islanders lost their more recent game, they still have more points than the Devils. So the Penguins and Islanders have 48 points, Devils have 47, Capitals have 46, and then at the very bottom are the Blues Jackets with 37, which by the way, we will do a follow-up episode regarding Elvis versus Lincolns and his status in Columbus because he had some spicy things to say to the media, and that might play into the favor of the Devils. So that's my first bit of bad news, which is the Penguins, unfortunately, they did something similar that the Devils did against the Panthers, which was you defeated one of the hottest teams in the NHL, and I don't think anyone anticipated for the Penguins to do so, but here we are. So now the Devils are a point behind the Islanders and the Penguins in the Metro, so things continue to not be easy for the Devils as the season progresses because the Metropolitan Division is chaotic for the time being. Now, what's the other good news, bad news? Well, I am saving that for the third and final segment, so stick around for that. But for now, let's talk about this game against the Bruins because for the second time this season, the Devils were shut out, this time at the hands of 2024 All-Star player Jeremy Swayman. So, did, did any of you see that quote from Swayman in which he said, like, uh, he deserves to be an all-star because of the arbitration Bruja he had to go through? And um, I think people who are big fans of Jesper Bratt, I, I, I think they couldn't help but roll their eyes at that quote. But anyway, that's neither here or there. Let's talk about this game in which the Devils came out on the losing end by a score of three to nothing. So the first thing I want to highlight is that, uh, like I said moments ago, I don't know how many of you had to drink coffee or were somewhat tired, lethargic, whatever the case might be, uh, when tuning into this matchup if you were on the West Coast. But the Devils, it seemed like they needed a coffee run because they came out very slow against the Bruins. And it shows after the first period because uh, originally the Bruins got 17 shots on Dawes. Now, that was later changed to 16. But what I noticed was that it seemed like the Devils couldn't control the puck. They couldn't clear the puck. They had to rely heavily on Nico Dawes. And I'm glad that Dawes is standing strong in between the pipes. This is a breath of fresh air for the Devils. But we cannot just keep relying on the goalies to help bail out the Devils. you got to take some of that pressure off of their shoulders, especially when Nico Dawes, like if he's going to be thrusted into a bigger role with the Devils, you got to try to ease him into it and take that sort of burden off of them. Because remember, 
Dawes, uh, the reason why he probably wasn't in consideration for one of the starting spots of the at the beginning of the year was because, if you recall, he had off-season hip surgery, which sidelined him for a few months. So that's something that I'm a little concerned about if this is how it's going to be because I don't want to put too much pressure on Nico Dawes. I want him to ease into his new role, especially since he had major surgery over the offseason. So the fact that the Devils were not trailing at any point after the first period was very surprising. And I did put that out on social media. And literally a few seconds later, the Bruins end up scoring. Or did they? Because apparently, very smart replay challenge by Lindy Ruff and company. They saw that uh, Pasternak was offsides and it was clear as day. So the goal was waved off. So the Devils got a mulligan. They got a lifeline. That alone should probably wake them up. So that way they can get back into it. They're like, okay, we dodged a bullet. Now let's play a little harder. Nope. The first period, it was all Bruins. And like I said, the fact that the Devils were not trailing in the game was astonishing. And then come the second period, 30 seconds in, the Bruins scored. Thanks to Coyle, short side, backhander attempt. So the Devils were like cats. They had nine lives and they used up all of their nine lives. Their luck ran out. And as a result, the Bruins go up one to nothing. Okay, so the Devils are trailing for all the second period, and they got a little bit better. I'll give them credit where credit is rightfully earned because it seemed like the Devils started to get their legs underneath them because at the end of period two, the Devils had 10 shots in favor of the Bruins, nine. But the one thing I just noticed was that it just seemed like No matter what the Devils generated on Swayman, it seemed like there were were a lot of one-and-done opportunities. Like, there were some moments of the game in which I'm just like, okay, they're going to generate something on Swayman, but you just knew they weren't going to score in that possession. They just lacked that sort of firepower. But they started to get it going in period two. And then period three, going into the final period of regulation, Bill Spaulding and Ken Danico, they were hammering this point home on the broadcast. They said the first go around in which the Devils played against the Bruins, the Devils were trailing one to nothing. Swayman was in the net. The Devils scored in the third period. The game goes into OT and Jack Hughes walks home the winner. Remember, I said that was probably one of the biggest games of the year. If not, that was the biggest game of the year because of what it meant. Because the Bruins are still atop of the Atlantic Division. Doesn't matter that they lost Patrice Bergeron to retirement. The Bruins are picking up right where they left off last season. But third period comes around, and the Devils, once again, they just left Nico Dawes out to dry because David Pasternak, while on the power play, Dawes made a bunch of great A saves prior to Pasternak's goal. But like I said, their luck just ran out and Dawes was holding on for as long as he could, but he just couldn't hold on no more because the Devils failed to clear the puck, which is something they got to work on. But anyway, it just wasn't meant to be. Devils lose three to nothing. Now, I see a lot of people on social media complaining about the game and rightfully so. It was not a good effort by the Devils. But make no mistake, this road trip was pretty solid for New Jersey because They played against three Atlantic teams. They're down a lot of players. So you're missing Jack Hughes, Timo Meyer, Andre Pallad, Dougie Hamilton, Jonas Siegenthaler, uh, Tomas Nosek. I'm probably forgetting a few other players. But going into all these matchups, I think it's safe to say that the Devils were the underdogs because the Atlantic division is no joke. Like, you got to be on your A game to, to beat some of these teams. So the Devils walking away with all six potential points, it was a long shot, but they did get something out of it. So in the first game against the Lightning, they got a point out of it. Okay, at least their hard work was rewarded. Then the second game against the Panthers, Devils walked away with the two points in a pretty convincing fashion, thanks to Nico Dawes. And then in this matchup against the Bruins, they walked away with nothing. So they got three out of the six potential points, which I think is pretty decent if you ask me. So solid road trip. Wasn't the best, but far from worse. Worst outcome was that they... Uh, get swept during this Atlantic Division road trip. That's the worst case scenario, but that's not what happened, especially I think you have to factor in that the Devils are missing a lot of key players, like I just mentioned. So they're the underdogs going into a lot of these matchups. So I'm actually proud of the Devils on this road trip. And unfortunately, the Bruins have just had the Devils number for most of the year. In fact, this is the third and final matchup between 
these two teams uh, this season, which thank God, because the first go around, Devils, they tied it up and then they got the OT game winning. OK, that that's good. But then the second go, uh, remember what happened on December 30th, Devils scored two unanswered goals and then the Bruins, they just put their foot on the gas pedal and it was a snowball effect from there. Another classic performance by Vitek Vanacek during the 2023-2024 season. And then in this matchup, Devils get shut out for the second time this year. So the streak of them uh, not getting shut out, it resets after that, what, I don't know how many games between the Red Wings and Bruins, but still it's just like uh, Devils get shut out twice and it they didn't get shut out at all last season. So yeah, that's where we stand, but I still think the road trip was somewhat solid for New Jersey. Okay, we're going to talk about Brendan Smith and his injury circumstance and also some other players that did step up their game because we got Shimon Nemetz going up against the Bruins captain. He showed no mercy against the Rat. He didn't care who was in front of him. But before we talk about all that, let's talk about FanDuel because while the Devils are underdogs, maybe you can make some extra money. So the NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is super easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet, like live same game parlays, find bets in the new explore tab, make a parlay in the parlay hub, the best way to find popular parlays and more. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. My Los Angeles Lakers are no better than the devils right now. So both my teams are kind of failing me, but FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL or the Taylor Swift league, however you want to put it. Okay, let's talk about some players that caught my eye. Now, as you guys know, for a post-game recap after a loss, I do not do my three stars of the game, but there's still some players that were uh, a light shining in a pretty much dark game for the Devils. So let's talk about Shimon Nemetz and his aggressive nature because he went toe-to-toe with Brad Marchand. No, there were no gloves dropped. There was no fighting majors. There was none of that, but... Still, at one point, Shimon Nemetz put Brad Marchand into a headlock, the captain. So it's just like uh, Nemo the fish going up against uh, the rat or the weasel, however you want to put it, the nose. But I think we all know that Brad Marchand is definitely a tough cookie. He uh, plays the game with an iron fist. And I think a lot of opponents, fan bases will tell you they're not really the biggest fan of Marchand, but if you ask Bruins fans, they they probably love him out there more likely than not. So that's just the name of the game. But the fact that Nemetz was not afraid and held down his ground, I think it shows what Nemetz can bring to the table. Because the one thing that I've been very impressed with with Shimon is that even if he doesn't show up on the score sheet, and I talked about this in a recent episode, you still feel his impact and his determination is out there. Like he he's showing no mercy. He has a lot of guts out there. So I respect Shimon and what he's been bring to the table for the Devils, and he's been an energizer. And I think in, in a very uh, dark cloud for Devils right now because a lot of their defensemen are hurt, Shimon Metz has been a very bright spot for New Jersey. Now, I don't think he's going to get his name into the uh, Calder Trophy race, but at the same time, I think we should all be impressed with Shimon Metz and the effort he puts out there. Now, while there was little to no offense from the Devils, I still want to give these two players a recognition, and that is Nathan Bastian and Nico Heischer, because I put this out on social media. I noticed that, that Nathan Bastian, he was trying to be the playmaker, especially when the Devils uh, started to get it going in period two and parts of period three. I just saw that Nathan Bastian was keeping offensive possessions alive. He was coming in aggressive. He was coming in on the forecheck. He was trying to loosen up the puck. And the same can be said for Nico Heischer, because he sure had a few centering uh, attempts himself out in front of Jeremy Swayman. But similar to the last couple times in which the Devils play the Bruins, Devils were going to have to earn it against any netminder uh, for the Bruins. So once again, Spalding and Danico were just hammering home this point on air, which was that the Devils were trailing one to nothing going to the final period of regulation, the first go round against the Bruins at the Prudential Center. But Swayman was in the net and the Devils had to earn those two goals that they scored and Swayman was standing strong in between the pipes and he's showing everyone why he deserves to be an all-star. But anyway, Nathan Bastian, Nico Heischer, 
definitely offensive bright spots for the Devils in which they got shut out. So I think uh, Nathan Bastian and Nico Heischer deserve a lot of credit for their aggressive nature and just how they were playing two ways. So uh, similar to Shimon Demetz, Nathan Bastian, he's not going to show up in the score sheet every single game. But this is what why we always have this inside joke on social media talking about is Bastion elite or not? It's just because uh, uh, it's just because he doesn't stick out in any particular category, but somehow, some way, his impact is still felt. And while we're on the subject of being aggressive, what is it with Trent Frederick uh, trying to go toe to toe with some Devils players? Because last year, Kevin Ball had his first career fight against the Bruins, and it was because of Trent Frederick. So uh, Frederick uh, went toe to toe with Ball last year, and in this game. I saw him trying to go toe to toe with Alexander Holtz. And, and if my memory serves me well, I think this would be Alexander Holtz's first career fight. But uh, Holtz didn't take the bait and he was just a little pushing and shoving, but nothing really to sound the alarm bells in the heads of the referees. Now, I want to read this quote from Nico Dawes before we talk about Brendan Smith. Uh, so Nico Dawes spoke to uh, Devils Media post game, and here's what he had to say. He said, quote, I think I can save those two shots looking back on them, but you're not uh, going to get them every night. I have too much confidence in myself. Like, I know I can save those. I just misplayed them both a little bit. Okay. I like that Dawes is trying to take accountability, but he did everything he was supposed to do. According to James Nichols of New Jersey Hockey Now, he said Dawes made 2.66 goal save above expected in the loss to the Bruins. So Dawes did everything he was supposed to do. And when looking back at some of those goals, it it was bound to happen that the Devils were going to let up the first goal of the game. They were just a cap with nine lives. That's just how, that's just how it played out. But then in the second period, like I said, Coyle backhander attempt, short side, I'm sure Dawes would like to have that one back, but it doesn't change the fact that the Devils allowed for Coyle to get that close and shoot that point blank. And that was the name of the game in period one. And then when looking at the second goal that that was led up in the third period to David Pasternak, once again, the, the Bruins were on the power play. Devils were failing to clear the puck. And prior to that goal, you can look back at the replay and you see Dawes. He's making save after save after save after save. And he's trying his best to break up the play before it happens with his power, whatever the case might be. And he's fought over a couple screens to try to make sure he doesn't get blindsided. But this goes on his team for not clearing the puck while on the PK. So I can't put this blame on Dawes at all. I know he's trying to take accountability, but he did his damn job. It's the team in front of him that didn't do their job. Now, before any of you go into the comment section and say, like, why don't you ever defend Vitek Vancek in this manner? Well, it's because I have in the past, but sometimes it's just like, Vitek, you got to make that save. So... I don't want to crap on VTech while uh, he didn't play in this game because I don't want to scapegoat him or anything, but I can already just have a good feeling in my stomach knowing that someone is going to try to type that in the comment section. But I don't want to see VTech fail. I want to see him succeed, but the facts are the facts. But anyway, Nico Dawes, great performance. Now, let's talk about one of the biggest storylines during the course of the game, and that was Brendan Smith who sustained a leg injury in period one, made his way to the bench, then the tunnel, and we didn't see him the rest of the game. When asked post game about Smith and his overall status, Lindy Ruff said that Smith will be evaluated once the team gets back to New Jersey. Oh boy. So for most of the game, the Devils were rocking with five defensemen. Luke Hughes, he racked up his career high in minutes. So some some people had to go the extra mile to make up for the loss for Brendan Smith. Now, some of you are going to be asking, is this a big loss for New Jersey? Because I think it's safe to say that a lot of fans are iffy when it comes to Brendan Smith. Because when he's a forward, he's actually really good. He's aggressive. He's in the right place at the right time. And when he's a defenseman, sometimes teams like to put him on an island, get him into an odd man rush situation. So that way they can have a better scoring chance. That's been a big talking point throughout the course of the season. So I'd say that people are conflicted when it comes to Brendan Smith. Is it a big loss or is this a blessing in disguise? Well, it's the same circumstance for Jonas Siegenthaler and Dougie Hamilton. So we don't know the status of Smith's injury. It could just be like a day-to-day, could be week-to-week. 
Could be months, could be the entire year. We don't really know. But here's the fact of the matter. From a playing standpoint, Brandon Smith, is he the best one on the rink? No. But the Devils penalty kill, one of their minor bright spots is Brandon Smith. Smith is very aggressive. He knows how to lay the hits. He knows how to try to muscle his way to the puck. So I know Brendan Smith might not be the most skilled player on the rink, but the reason why he continues to see his name in the lineup is because he's one of the few aggressive players on a non-aggressive roster. Because Can Danico even said it on air that the Devils are not really notoriously known for being an aggressive team, but Brendan Smith is one of those exceptions. Okay, so those are my thoughts from a playing standpoint. So if the Devils were fully healthy and Brendan Smith goes down with an injury, I would say not the biggest loss in the world. He's replaceable. But here's the circumstance here. Jonas Siegenthaler is out. Dougie Hamilton is out. Now, depending on how the injury goes, Brendan Smith, he could miss some time. I'm not trying to speculate on anything. Got no new information. A lot can change within the next few hours. But while I'm recording this episode, let's just say that Brendan Smith might miss the next couple of games. That is a huge hit to the Devils in terms of their depth. Because might I remind you, Dougie Hamilton, Jonas Siegenthaler, same thing I said in a prior episode. You can have your own opinion on Jonas Siegenthaler and Dougie Hamilton from a playing standpoint. That's fine. And I will talk about it in a future episode because I am sick and tired of the Dougie Hamilton slander. But that's beside the point. It's still a major hit to your depth. And now you possibly got to rely on someone from Utica to try to bail you out. So Brendan Smith going down, yes, that is, that would hypothetically be a big loss for New Jersey because their defense is already murky, to say the least. Now you're losing a, a, a veteran piece in Brendan Smith who kind of knows the system better than anyone for the time being. So it's just like, yes, that is a huge loss for New Jersey, at least from a depth standpoint. And I think we can all be in unison about that. So you can have your own opinion on Brendan Smith from a playing standpoint. That's fine. But just from a structure standpoint, big loss for New Jersey, potentially. Now, we're going to shift over to some more good news, bad news circumstances. But before we continue, I want to tell you guys about the Game Time app. Because maybe you want to see the Devils play up close and personal. I've actually used the app a couple times. I love it because last-minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Views from all seats in the venue, lowest price guaranteed, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, etc. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last-minute seats. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Okay, so remember in segment one in which I said that I had Bad news, good news, and unfortunately, more bad news for the Devils. Well, to, to give you guys some hope the next couple of games, here's my good news for the Devils and how their schedule is shaking out. So on Wednesday, they will be taking on the Montreal Canadiens at home, and then on Friday, they will take on the Blue Jackets. So in my opinion, the Canadiens and Blue Jackets, two winnable games for New Jersey. I'm not trying to jump the gun on anything. But I think it's safe to say that for the first time in a while, I think that this is a matchup that falls into the favor of the Devils. And if not, if they are underdogs going into these matchups, I haven't looked at the FanDuel uh, betting lines, then I don't think it's by that much. So Canadians, Blue Jackets, I think those are two winnable games for New Jersey. But here's more bad news. The Devils have the fifth hardest schedule in the NHL to close out uh, the first half of the year before we go into the all-star break. So they got the Dallas Stars, the Vegas Golden Knights, the Carolina Hurricanes, and then the Tampa Bay Lightning. So there's more bad news right there. So the Devils are going to have to uh, basically uh, rally together to try to rack up some of those wins. And I guess here's some more good news because, remember, Jack Hughes is week to week, and usually when he's week to week, he misses anywhere from four to five games. So Maybe if I'm being wishful here, maybe Jack Hughes will return, but Timo Meyer is still projected to come back out of everyone who is injured for right now the soonest. So 
we'll see what happens. But yeah, there, there's your uh, good news, bad news to close out today's episode before we compare the stats. All right. Let's compare the stats, give the Devils a letter grade, and get out of here. So shots on goal differential, 36 to 31 in favor of the Bruins. Face-off win percentage, dead even, 50% of pop. This is the first time that Michael McLeod uh, lost more face-offs than he's actually won. So, yeah, this game was crazy. Uh, power play, uh, Bruins were 1 for 4, Devils were 0 for 1. I think a big talking point during the game was that the Devils weren't given that many power play opportunities. Hits, 26 to 22 in favor of the Bruins. Block shots, 15 to 13 in favor of the Bruins. Giveaways, 10 to 5. Bruins led that department. Takeaways, Devils led this department, 7 to 6. So if I had to give the Devils a letter grade, I'll give them a D plus because they did get shut out, but there were still some minor bright spots, but it doesn't overshadow the overall team effort, which was very flat-footed, and they're putting a lot of pressure on Nico Dawes, and I don't think that's fair to him. So let me know what you guys think. What did you think about this uh, matchup against the Bruins? Are you happy that the Devils don't have to take on the Bruins the rest of the season? What do you think of the upcoming matchups for New Jersey? Fifth hardest schedule in the NHL, according to Bill Spaulding. So it might get a little worse before it gets better, but we'll see what happens. So as for today's episode, that's all the time I have for you guys. So continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys next episode. Thanks for listening once again.